What's good on guys? My name's Ando and I've been opening Pokemon cards on YouTube for over 10 years now but never once played the competitive side to the game. And so for today's video I'm so excited to take you on the adventure about how I not only played the 2019 Pokemon card world champion after one day of Pokemon card training Not one person clapped for me But I also threw a massive Pokemon card tournament for all of Australia. Where do we even begin with the story? Let's go back to Pokemon Worlds last year when I was in Yokohama, Japan. And this was the first event that really gave me the desire to learn how to play the TCG, even though I've been opening Pokemon cards for years on YouTube. I think it was definitely a combination of seeing my friends play in their own matches, along with watching some of the top competitors battle it out in front of a huge audience on stage. It really made me wish we had some sort of similar tournament for less experienced people back in Australia. Now luckily, I had the perfect person to call. Everybody, I want you to meet J-Love. Not only is J-Love a fellow Australian YouTuber, but he's also an official TCG competitor, ranking number 60 at Pokemon Worlds. And when I told him I wanted to create an entirely free tournament back home in Australia, he was so down for the idea. But he also had one condition. I had to not only learn the entire Pokemon TCG, but I had to participate in this same tournament. And at this point, I still had no idea I would be facing up against the Pokemon World Champion. But nevertheless, we agreed on our deal and started to plan out this ridiculous Pokemon tournament. So after this conversation, I flew back to Australia and while I was on the plane, I was really thinking, how am I gonna pull off a massive feat like this? It was something I really wanted to achieve. And that's when I remembered my buddy, Chris. Now, if you don't know Chris right here, he actually owns the Pop Attack vending machines, which are all around Australia and they stock all Pokemon cards. But mainly I knew him because they stock the unlisted leaf Pokemon card mystery packs And this is where Chris pretty much saved the entire day because as soon as I got off the plane and I gave him a call I was like Chris. I really want to throw a tournament a Pokemon card tournament for all ages Completely free after about three seconds of pure silence. He said Ando I'm in. Chris actually had an entire venue over in Melbourne called Archery Attack, which was this huge arena that he would completely gut and let me have for the weekend to throw this Pokemon card tournament. And not only did he lock down that entire venue, he said, what else are you after? I said, I desperately need some prizes to give out for the winners. He said, no worries at all. Let me raid some of the vending machines. So now we had a bit of a mini team. It was Chris, J-Love and myself, but we needed a few other people like judges and competitive players to really bounce ideas off of and make sure that we formed a day that was going to be fun for everyone and work seamlessly. So that's when we formed SEAL Team 10. This was a crew that was made up of volunteers from Archery Attack, the arena that we were renting out. We had a couple of competitive players that had been in so many tournaments before they knew exactly what they wanted if a free massive tournament was run in Australia. We also had judges, literally Pokemon card judges that were going to volunteer their time to attend this tournament and not to mention a few people that ran competitive Facebook groups here in Australia to really get the word out. And once we had everyone on board it was time to unleash the first ad and let everyone know this was happening. We started small in these Facebook groups and then overnight on the first ad post we completely sold out our master division. Every single slot completely full. So for the next couple of days myself and Julian actually hit Instagram and we managed to fill up the seniors division and the juniors division. And just like that we had filled every single slot in this completely free Pokemon card tournament that I had only dreamed about in Japan. Now that the tournament was officially green lit, I flew all the way to Melbourne to start getting prepared. Not only did we have to set up this gigantic warehouse space for the entire tournament, but I'd also promised J-Love that I'd be competing against all the other trainers tomorrow, which means I had to learn the entire TCG in just 10 hours. And just when I thought that challenge couldn't be any more difficult, J-Love told me that I'd also be facing off against the 2019 world champion. I couldn't believe it. Not only did we have to set up, fund, and successfully run an entire Pokemon card tournament, but I was also expected to now learn the TCG in less than a day in hopes of beating the former Pokemon World Champion. I felt so much pressure in the fact I needed to learn every single ability, every single attack, in order to have any chance against this champion. Mind you, he would have loaded decks, so he would be playing a really bad deck and I'd be playing a really good deck. But it's still the 2019 World Champion and I only learned the TCG eight hours ago. This was gonna be tough. And while I was struggling to just grasp the basic concepts of the TCG, Chris and his crew were busy transforming the entire warehouse into our official Pokemon TCG gym. 
Not only did they set up all the tables, food and games for our competitors, but Chris even 3D printed a couple of gift cards to be used by our winners in our official Pop Attack vending machines. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but with all of this meticulous planning of the entire event, the one thing that was left off to me, I completely messed up. I was supposed to book my hotel room for that night, so when I left Julian's at 3 o'clock in the morning and went to the hotel, I asked the staff, do you have my room ready? And he said, no, your room's booked for two months time. This hotel's completely full. And this was the same weekend that a massive tennis tournament was happening in Melbourne, the Australian Open. So there wasn't a single hotel room anywhere in Melbourne that was available for me to stay in. I was homeless for the night. So long story short, I took an Uber ride to the outskirts of Melbourne, I slept there, and then I had to wake up at 6am to get an Uber all the way back to the venue because it was a two hour back and forth journey, which was just absolutely bonkers. So the next day, I woke up, pulled myself together, and got to the venue, ready for the tournament. And honestly, at this point, I'd even forgot I was a little bit tired because the venue just looked absolutely incredible. All right, so what happened next? The tournament started, everything seemed to be flowing. The staff were doing staffing stuff. The the judges were judging, the players were playing, but all I was thinking about was, I've got to warm up. So, I picked out my first opponent, and I don't want to brag, but holy smokes, I would actually come through and won. I was trying so hard. You can see in all these clips how concentrated I am, because all I wanted to do was play the right cards at the right time, and I nailed it. I had actually won my first ever competitive game. Okay, first error was with that Pidgey, I should have realised that. Second one, I should have got the boss's order and swapped him around, and then I would have cleaned it up last one. So I went straight onto the next kid, and this kid had his hat sideways, and that's where I knew I was really into trouble, because when they have their hat sideways, it's, it's pretty much over, and it was, because he absolutely pummeled me and destroyed any ounce of confidence I had left. So yeah, I won the first game, lost the next one, so these two warm-up games, I was feeling a bit 50-50, and going into this championship match, I was absolutely Listen, so nervous. I know you've only been playing a game for less than a day, mm -hmm. but you've come very far. I think rather than focus on the missteps you made today, mm, we need to focus on the successes and the correct plays and right. the games you won as well. You can do this, bro. I appreciate Let's it. Get out of there. Good game. Good stuff. Keep on gaming. Keep on. That's what he says. He I'm going to try. I'm going to try and keep on gaming. Not only did I have the pressure of my TCG coach looming over me, but a large crowd had suddenly formed around our table. And I can't lie, the pressure and lack of sleep from the night before was definitely getting to me. I started to just forget the basics. I was just losing track of any game plan that I had in place. And honestly, that's about when it happened. The moment that cost me the entire game against the world champion. I was too tired and forgot to use Rotom's ability. I had played the right card, but I'd never once been like, let's activate Rotom's ability to draw three cards. And that's my excuse as to why I lost against the world champion. And it was funny because after I lost, I felt all the pressure come off my shoulders. It was like undoing a backpack. So I went into the next two matches against fans and somehow I won. And the crazy part was the final match I played of the day was against the junior world champion and I beat him as well. I'm not gonna brag about that because the kid's like 20 years younger than me, but I think winning that match in particular had really gone to show me I'd put way too much pressure on myself in the earlier games. I should have just tried to stay more clear headed and composed rather than just freaking myself out. But to be honest, the biggest win of that day was actually throwing this tournament. People coming up to me and just saying, this never happens in Australia. We're so grateful this was actually thrown. Just seeing how happy everyone was to be able to participate in this tournament, be able to throw a completely free event for anyone who just wanted to be playing Pokemon cards, felt awesome and it felt like something Australia desperately needed. So I was so happy that I could be a part in making that happen and seeing it become a reality, it's hard to even put that into words. It was very, very cool. I honestly just want to get more people into the TCG. I think it would be very cool to throw more of these events all around Australia, potentially even around the world, to encourage more people to just sign up and start their first ever TCG journey. And I think it's really important to throw these free, really cool events for players that already play. Just providing something a little bit different from a Game Shop Night or I guess a Pokemon Regionals. Just one of these random one-off tournaments that are just exciting and fun. That's what I like the most. Thank you so much for being a part of this absolute epic tale and thank you to everyone that turned out and trusted me with this tournament it means the absolute world it was such a success and i hope we throw another one and i see you competing at the next one against me